Hey, what's up, folks? This is a very brief review of the January 19th, 2013 episode of Saturday Morning Slam. Uh, I just got done watching it. Uh, Saturday Morning Slam, if you don't watch it, is this half-hour uh, show. It's usually two matches with some fun little backstory on some of your favorite WWE superstars. It's on uh, the Fox Network in my area, which it has a subsidiary, like, little... They turn into the Vortex. You should be used to be the Fox Box, and before that it was for kids TV. Anyway, I exaggerate and go off on tangents sometimes, so I'm just going to get to the point. You know, normally the matches are a lot more aimed towards kids. They're more family friendly. Not the WWE Raw and SmackDown isn't, but they're definitely a lot more of a fun, not necessarily fast paced, kind of slower, more what you'd see at a house show which is an untelevised show or an independent wrestling show. Um, however, the first the first match of the evening or morning was Natalia, a.k.a. Natty Nana Hart, taking on uh, Alicia Fox. Now, an average episode of Raw and SmackDown, the Divas matches are about two minutes long. And there's a lot, there's talent on the WWE uh, Divas roster, but it's not really showcased that well. I, this is the first Divas match featured on Saturday Morning Slam. They made it clear. Uh, by the way, the hosts were Booker T and Josh Matthews. They made it clear that this is the first Divas match. And you know, I'm like, oh, good. If it's two minutes on Raw, it's going to be 12 seconds on here. But I was pleasantly surprised. They actually uh, had a good five, six, seven-minute match somewhere around that time frame uh, between Natty and uh, Alicia. Uh, I'm not the biggest fan of Alicia. I'm not saying she's bad or anything. I'm just, but she she really showcased her talent. Uh, Natty definitely took charge in the match, and you know she got that pin. Uh, or, I'm sorry, she got the submission win with the beautiful sharpshooter. Crowd was into the match. It was a fun, you know, a fun match. They actually had like more than five minutes of content for Divas. It was it was very interesting. Uh, we went to commercial break. Then, oh, by the way, Raw, SmackDown, come on. You could take a take a little note. You have a three-hour Raw. You can have a 10-minute Divas match at one time. Please, for the love of God, you can have a Divas match. Uh, that kind of quality that I just saw is definitely worthy of Raw. Then we had uh, a commercial break. We went back. We had a little uh, promo. It wasn't really a kitty. You know, fun thing is just Sheamus, a little hype video on who Sheamus is as a superstar and how he wants to get the the championship back. They mentioned that, uh, you know, he just lost the uh, world heavyweight title and he wants it back. He's the first ever WWE Irish-born champion. So who was the first ever WWE world heavyweight champion that was Irish-born? Anyway, so we had... Uh, Seamus come out and he cut a little promo. He's like, I'm going to face, I wanted to face the biggest, baddest superstar in the locker room, but he wasn't here. So I'm going to bring out Michael McGillicuddy. So, uh, you know, that really didn't start off well for me. They're just putting him down. I realize it was kind of funny, but so Michael McGillicuddy is a super underrated talent on the roster. I knew it was going to be a squash match, but I was pleasantly surprised. It was a fun little indie match, slower paced. Uh, I said paced paste anyway um uh, so this this match wow my phone my other phone's ringing so i'm gonna ignore that please ignore the phone um how rude so so they kind of did the classic thing where <coughs> they were running the ropes and being that sheamus is a smarter superstar than michael mcgilligatty uh he tricked michael into continuously running the ropes. Wow, that is very distracting. Uh, to continuously run the ropes while he went out to the announce table, got a bottle of water, sat down, and then he just started chugging the water. My, all the while, they go to commercial break, Michael, Michael is still running the ropes. It was kind of funny. Uh, crowd was into it, especially the little kids, you know. So Seamus comes into the ring. By this time, uh, Michael is completely gassed out. And uh, he gives them the water. Uh, they they do this little spot where they go out. Uh, well, Michael gets the gets a little comeuppance on Sheamus. 
And then Sheamus starts chasing him outside the ring. Well, uh, Michael hides underneath or to the side of a ring, and Sheamus kicks him in his butt. It's kind of funny. Definitely more kitty than you see on Raw and SmackDown. Uh, Michael definitely had a little showcase on here, but it was definitely just a squash. It led to the white noise, and Sheamus got the the win. Um, we went backstage after that match, and Natty, now fully you know, dressed formal, uh, was interviewing The Miz when primetime players Hura, Hura, Hura came out and interrupted him. Well, this led to The Miz challenging D. Young, Darren Young, to a match on next week's episode. So looking forward to that. Um, he said he's going to make the whistle go away on Titus. So we'll see where that goes. So this is my brief review of Saturday Morning Slam, January 19th, 2013. Uh, let me know what you think of my reviews. If you've got any episodes you want me to check out, got any specific DVDs. I just reviewed um, Rock Bottom 1998 from the DDF Attitude Collection. Um, i got some crazy unboxings. I just almost 40 or 50 DVDs I just got in the mail this week, so please check out my unboxings. Got a ton of other stuff. Uh, appreciate you watching. Thanks to all my subscribers and all the people watching my videos. Have a good one.